Hello, good morning everybody. Thank you for watching. For this video, I want to share with you guys the number one thing to do in Oahu. I've been trying to make this video for a while. Back in 2007, when I was an activity agent, this is what I recommended to anybody that I liked, anybody that I wanted them to save money. This activity is pretty much the only thing you really need, especially if you're in Hawaii for only a few days. My sister's here, she's been here the whole week helping us babysit, so we haven't really had a chance to take her around because we've been uh, working. She has to leave today, and the best thing to do, especially because it's Saturday, is to take her around the island and show her all the places, uh, food, things that she can do in Oahu. The goal is to leave right now, which is about 7.30, and be back by around 3.30. That'll give her enough time to pack and get ready, and then I can take her to the airport. The reason is the number one thing to do is because even if you don't have a car, you can just rent one for one day and do all of this that I'm about to show you guys. So let's get started. As you can see, Risa's excited to go and uh, explore the island. The first thing you need to do when you're uh, trying to go around the island is get out of Waikiki or Koolina, whichever one of those two places you're staying at because everything's expensive and there's really nothing to see. So we're gonna start out with the Aloha Stadium. But first, I'm gonna get some coffee. All right, so there's two ways to get out of Waikiki. You can go through on the west side, and uh, that's where we're going right now today, especially because it's Saturday. I recommend you take that way on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, because that's when the Aloha Stadium swap meet uh, is put out. But if it's not one of those days, then you can always go on the east side. Either way, uh, it takes about three hours nonstop to go all the way around and uh, there's a bunch of places you can pretty much take all day. But there's definitely a lot of things you can do to fill the entire day. Today, because we're trying to save some time, we're just gonna do the main free stuff, <laughs> pretty much, most, mostly. But I'll explain to you guys if there's anything that I'm skipping because of uh, time. Hello. Next speaker, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right guys, so this is the first place that we are skipping. On my left side is uh, downtown Honolulu, where they have a lot of historical buildings like the Iolani Palace, Kamehameha Statue and all that. It's one of those things where you either gotta park and walk around or uh, just drive to each location uh, separately so we don't have that kind of time. And so for this trip, we're gonna skip it, but just know that before you leave Honolulu, uh, that's one of the places you wanna check out. Right after you pass the airport exit and before you hit the Aloha Stadium, there's uh, the Moana Lua Gardens. And it's famous because it has really big, I forget what they call them, but really big, huge trees. They're mostly famous in Japan because of a commercial. So they make for a good place to take pictures, especially if you come with your family. It's a nice big open field with uh, these massive trees kind of scattered all over. So that's a nice place to stop. And on top of that, the uh, Tripler Hospital, which is a big pink building on top of a hill. It makes a nice backdrop to that uh, garden. All right guys, so we made it to the swap meet. It's pretty much the whole circumference of the parking lot for the stadium. I found that if you go all the way around, it'll take you about an hour, but then the, some of the stalls start, kind of start repeating. Uh, it looks a little slower still, maybe because we were early. I do want to take this opportunity to show you guys behind right there where they have the, uh, the one of the stations for the train that's getting built. Uh, if you drive that way or walk that way, you'll be able to go to Pearl Harbor and uh, Fort Island. There's a couple of activities you can do up there, like uh, going to the submarine, going to the big ship. So if you find yourself too early at the swap meet or even uh, you go to the Pearl Harbor and you get a ticket that's for later in the day, you can always come back to the uh, Aloha Stadium while you wait. And so yeah, we're gonna check out the stadium for a little bit and then we're gonna keep moving. I just remember that on Saturdays, the swap meet opens at 8.30. And so when we got here, it, didn't, it wasn't really open all the way. 
So we walked all the way around. Uh, it actually took us about 20, 30 minutes, not too long. Alright guys, so right now we're in Wahiwa. It's the place with the most population before you hit North Shore. And here there's a couple places that you can go visit that I recommend. l, &L if you haven't tried it, I think they have it in California too. And also uh, Maui Mike's Chicken. Probably the best chicken I've ever eaten. Right now it's 9.20, so I think uh, it's still too early. They're closed. But if you're hungry and you're on your way to North Shore, those are two places that I recommend that are cheap and are really, really good. All right, guys, we're at Dole Plantation. This is definitely a must stop before you hit North Shore right after you leave Wahiwa. Uh, they have uh, a bunch of stuff here like uh, pineapple ice cream, a bunch of pineapple different products. They have a pineapple maze. They have trains. You can go around the lot. All right, guys, when you get to the bottom of the hill coming out of uh, Dole Plantation, don't forget there's a Y. You want to go left. If you go straight, you're going to miss the whole Haleiwa town, which is uh, probably one of the most popular places to visit here in the North Shore. Right now, we're going to a bakery, which is pretty much known by locals. It's starting to get a little bit more popular with uh, tourists, but uh, they have really good uh, pastries and stuff. So uh, since we're acting like tourists, I'm going to go grab some stuff for the girls and my sister. And then, uh, yeah, I'll show you guys what, what they have. After you're done at the bakery, if you uh, go towards that same direction you can go to the sugar mill they have like some really good shaved ice with homemade syrup it's delicious but that's out of the way we're in the opposite direction so instead we're just gonna skip that and keep going around the island we're gonna go back towards Haleiwa and there's a couple of shrimp places I haven't said which one I'm gonna stop at uh, but they're pretty much all good on this area, especially the closer you get to the Kahuku area uh, That's where the shrimp is farmed depending on how we feel we might stop right here in Haleiwa and eat there All right, since I wanted to show my sister l and &L, and maybe some uh, chicken katsu and local moko One which is the most uh, famous and the other one which is my favorite But we're gonna stop here real quick and just buy some for taste just to kind of you know, give her, give her an idea of what it is. All right, whatever you do, don't go to that l because everything they gave us had something wrong with it. The chicken didn't look fully cooked. The beef patties for the local moco was hard. The gravy was salty, it was just not good. Don't go there. All right guys, so we're getting ready to leave Haleiwa. Uh, in case you didn't know, Haliva is known for the shaved ice, uh, especially, I uh, can't remember the name. Uh, it's right over there. And also, the uh, acai bowls are being uh, really popular now. So we're already full with uh, what we've been eating, so we're going to skip those and go straight to the shrimp. So right there, acai bowl right there, right before the bridge. So once you leave Haleiwa, there's going to be like a ranch on the right where you'll see some horses. And right past that, one of the first beaches is known for having turtles kind of just laying on the sand. Almost every time that I come here, there's turtles laying there. So even though it's not guaranteed that you'll see a turtle, it's very likely that you will. Mm. 
All right, guys, so right now we're passing through uh, Waimea Bay. Which has a rock that a lot of tourists, or actually a lot of locals too, they like going, uh, climbing and then jumping into the water. That's on my left. And then on my right, there's Waimea uh, Valley, which uh, you can go in there and I guess there's people that can dive. It's, they have some kind of a, a company running uh, tourist type of things. Uh, it's not free. And following Waimea Bay, uh, there's Sunset Beach. And obviously it's known because it has the best sunsets. In my opinion, I've been here for a sunset and it's really pretty, really nice. It's also right next to Shark's Cove. where you can do a lot of snorkeling. It's a really popular place to go scuba diving as well. All right, guys, so that was Giovanni's. It's probably the most famous. I ordered the really spicy one, the hot and spicy, and I got the scampi, but I think I should have gotten the lemon one. I think that's the probably the better one. And the spicy one is really spicy. No refunds on that. So once you go past Kahuku, you're gonna go through Laie, and that's where they have the Polynesian Culture Center. It's like a big theme park. Uh, that's like an all day thing. So if you're expecting to uh, go around the island all day, then you can stop and be able to see most of it. But if you need to get back before sunset, then you wouldn't be able to do that since you want to be able to stay to at least the uh, luau. Before you get to the Polynesian Culture Center, you'll be able to see the Mormon Temple. All right guys, so I took that video a couple weeks ago and I realized towards the end, now that I was editing, that I kind of just burned out and uh, I wasn't really covering the rest of the areas. So right after we passed the Polynesian Culture Center, there's a bunch of beaches that are really nice. Uh, we stopped at one of them just because at the far end, there's like some rocks that you can kind of climb on top and then you'll be able to look down and see turtles. But that whole coastline is really nice. It's really pretty, especially during sunrise. Obviously, if you take all day you're gonna probably pass through that in the evening or at night already especially if you decide to stay at the Polynesian Culture Center for the Luau. Once you get past all that you'll be able to see Chinaman's Hat on the far left and uh, across the street from Chinaman's Hat is Kualua Ranch. Obviously that's famous for Jurassic Park and a bunch of other movies. You recognize the mountains when you see them. There's a bunch of activities that you could do at Kualua Ranch. Uh, there's like uh, horseback riding, ATV tours, there's uh, movie set tours, uh, a bunch of other stuff. If you keep going, you're gonna pass a 7-Eleven to your left and it's gonna be a couple of food trucks to your right and the road pretty much has like a T, so it'll keep going straight and then there's a veer to the left. If you take that left, you're gonna stay by the coast, uh, which uh, there's not much to see besides uh, a couple of uh, boat harbors and then eventually you end up at the mall and uh, in the Kaneoke town. Uh, but I recommend you go straight uh, and then you're gonna come to a shopping center on the left. There's gonna be a movie theater next to a McDonald's. They have a couple of food places there if you wanna stop and watch a movie and all that. Uh, but on the right across the street from that, uh, you'll find Temple Valley. In Temple Valley, you'll be able to get to the uh, Biodo Inn Temple. It only costs a few dollars to get in, but if you like taking pictures, uh, that's a really, really nice place to go take them. All right, so once you get back into the main road, now you're gonna come out at the Haiku area, which is the top side of Kaneohe Town. And uh, so you can either turn left on any of the following lights and you hit the mall and a bunch of uh, nice places. Kaneohe Town, obviously, that's where we used to live. Uh, we love it, it's quiet, it's, uh, it's really family friendly. And so you can either do that and keep going down to Kailua, which I will link a video that I made before for the east side of the island. So I'm not gonna cover that here since you can uh, just take a look at that video. But if you decide to keep going, because I'm assuming it's gonna be late unless you did it fast like we did, then you're gonna hit Lika Lika, which is one of your options to get back to town or you know, go right onto the H3. If you're going back to Waikiki, then I recommend taking the Lika Lika. And if you're trying to get back 
back to Coolina, then the H3 is the fastest way. And so that's it. The only other thing that I recommend, if you get there at night, you can go up to Tantalus, which is above Makiki. I also have a video on that. I just didn't show the night portion of it. But if you get up there at night, not all the way to the top, because it's a park and they close that, but right on the roadway, you'll be able to see a really nice night view of Waikiki with Daimehra in the back and the, all the hotels, and it's really nice. Uh, that's probably the last thing that I recommend at night, especially since most likely you want to return the car uh, before you go to the hotel, since parking is going to cost you just as much as it costs you to, you know, use it the whole day. So uh, that's my recommendation, obviously, is return it. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I have a bunch of videos coming up. So don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when the new videos come up. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.